what? My most dear lord. My most excellent good friends! Oh, Rosencrantz! Oh, Gildan Stone, how do ye both? <laughs> As the indifferent children of the earth. Happy in that we are not over happy. On fortune's cap, we are not the very bottom. Nor the soles of her shoe. Uh, neither, my lord. Then you live about her waist, or in the middle of her favors. <laughs> Faith, her private's we. The secret parts of fortune. Oh, most true. She is a strumpet. What news? <laughs> Nothing, my lord, but that the world's grown kind. Oh, then is doomsday near. But your news is not true. Let, let me question you more in particular. What have you, my good friends, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison hither? Prison, my lord. Denmark's a prison. Then is the world one? A goodly one in which there are many wards, confines, and dungeons, Denmark being one of the worst. <laughs> we think not so, my lord. Then tis none to you, for there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. To me, it's a prison. Then your ambition makes it one. Tis too narrow for your mind. Oh, God, I could be bounded in a nutshell and think myself the king of infinite space, were it not that I have bad dreams. Which dreams, indeed, are ambitions. For the very substance of the ambitious is merely the shadow of a dream. A dream itself is but a shadow. Uh, truly, and I have ambition of such an airy and light a quality that it is but a shadow shadow. Then are our beggars' bodies, and our monarchs and outstretched heroes our beggars' shadows. <laughs> Shall we to the court, for by my fay I cannot reason. I will we'll wait, wait upon you. you. I'm not, no such matter. I will not sort you with the rest of my servants. For to speak to you like an honest man, I am most dreadfully attended. But, but, but in the beaten way of friendship, what make you at Elsinore? To visit you, my lord. No other occasion. Beggar that I am, I am even poor in thanks. But I thank you, and sure, friends, my thanks are too dear a halfpenny. <laughs> Were you not sent for? Is this a free visitation? Is it your own inclining? Come, deal justly with me. Come, come, nay, speak. What should we say, my lord? Why, anything, but to the purpose. <laughs> you were sent for, and there's a kind of confession in your looks which your modesties have not craft enough to color. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. To what end, my lord? Well, that you must teach me. Uh, well, let me conjure you by the rights of our fellowship but by the consonancy of our youth, by the obligation of our ever-preserved love, and, and by what more dear or better proposer could charge you with all, be even and direct with me, whether you are sent for or no. What say you? Nay, <laughs> <laughs> I have an eye of you. If you love me, hold not off. My lord, we were sent for. <laughs> I will tell you why. And so shall my anticipation prevent your discovery and your secrecy to the king and queen molt no feather. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, uh, lost all my mirth, forgone all custom of exercise, and indeed it goes so heavy with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave, overhanging firmament, this majestical roof, fretted with golden fire, uh, it appears to me no thing other than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculties, in form and moving, how express and admirable in action. How like an angel, apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world, the paragon of animals. Yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. No, no woman neither, though by your smiling you seem to say so. My lord, there was no such stuff in my thoughts. <laughs> Why did you laugh then when I said man delights not me? To think, my lord, if you delight not in man, what Lenten entertainment the players shall receive from you. We coated them on the way, and hither are they come to offer you service. He that plays the king shall be welcome. 
His Majesty shall have tribute of me. The adventurous knight shall use his foil and target. The lover shall not sigh gratis. The humorous man shall end his part in peace. The clown shall make those laugh whose lungs are tickle o' the seer. And the lady shall say her mind freely, or the blank verse shall halt for it. Uh, what players are they? Even those you were wont to take such delight in, the tragedians of the city. Do they hold the same estimation they did when I was in the city? Are they so followed? No, indeed are they not. How comes it? Do they grow rusty? Nay, their endeavors keep in the wanted pace. Huzzah! There are the players. <laughs> Good friends, you are welcome to Elsinore, but my uncle father and aunt mother are deceived. <laughs> in what, my dear lord? I am mad, but north northwest. When the wind is southerly, I know a hawk from a handsaw. <laughs> Uh, Hark you, Gillen, start on YouTube. Uh, and each year I hear her. That great baby there is not yet out of her swaddling clouts. <laughs> Happily she second come to them, for they say an old woman is twice a child. <laughs> <laughs> I, I prophesy she comes to tell me of the players, mark it. Uh, you say right, on Monday mornings was so indeed. <laughs> uh, there, uh, my lord, I have news to tell you. My lord? I have news to tell you. When Roshis was an actor in uh, Rome. Well, the actors are come hither, my lord. Buzz, buzz. Upon my honor. Then came each actor on his ass. Uh, the best actors in the world, either for tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral, pastoral, comical, historical, pastoral, tragical, historical. <laughs> Scene individable, poem unlimited. Seneca cannot be too heavy, nor Plautus too light. For the law of writ and the liberty, these are the only men. Oh, Jephthah, judge of Israel, ah, what a treasure hast thou. What treasure had he, my lord? Why, one fair daughter, and no more the which he loved, passing well. Still on my daughter. Am I right, old Jephthah? If you call me Jephthah, my lord, I have a daughter that I love passing well. Nay, that follows not. What follows then, my lord? Why, as by lot, God wot, and then you know, it came to pass as most like it was. The first row of the pious chanting will show you more. Look you now where my abridgment comes. <laughs> you are welcome, masters! Welcome all! Oh, oh, my good friends! Oh, my old friend! My face is balanced since I saw thee last. It comes now to beard me in Denmark. Come, uh, we'll have a speech straight. Come, a passionate speech. What speech, my lord? I heard thee speak me a speech once, uh, but it was never acted, or if it was, not above once. And for the play, as I remember, please not the million, twas caviar to the general, but it was, as I received it, and others whose judgments cried in the top of mine, an excellent play. And one speech in it I chiefly loved, twas Aeneas' tale to Dido, and there about of it where he speaks of Priam's slaughter. If it live in your memory, begin at this line. Uh, let me see, let me see. The rugged Pyrrhus, like the Hyrcanian beast, uh, is not so. It begins with Pyrrhus. It... <laughs> the rugged Pyrrhus, he whose sable arms, black as his purpose, did the night resemble when he lay couched in the ominous horse, head to foot, now he is total ghouls, tricked with blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, baked and impassed into the parching streets, the land of tyrannous and a damned light to their vile murders, roasted in wrath and fire, and thus o'ersized with coagulate gore, with eyes like carbuncles, the hellish Pyrrhus, old grandsire Priam seeks. So proceed you. Oh, well done, my lord. Well spoken with good accent and good discretion. Anon he finds him, striking two shorted Greeks, his antique sword Rebellious to his arm, lies where it falls, repugnant to command. Unequal matched, Paris and Priam drives, and rage strikes wide, but with the whip and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. Then, since Lycilium, seeming to feel this blow with a flaming top, stoops to his base, and with a hideous crash takes prisoner Pyrrhus's ear. For lo, his sword, which was declining on the milky head of the Reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. <laughs> so as a painted tyrant, Pyrrhus stood, 
and like the neutral to his will and matter, did nothing. This is too long. And shout to the barbers with your beard. <laughs> but say, Alan, she, she's for a jig or a tale of baldry or she sleeps. <laughs> say, Alan, come to Hecuba. Oh, uh, but who, oh, who had seen the Moblet Queen? The Moblet Queen. Oh, that's good. The Moblet Queen is good. Run barefoot <laughs> up and down, threatening the flames with abyssum room. A clout upon that head where late the diadem stood in for a robe, about her lank and all o'er teamed loins, a blanket, and the alarm of fear caught up. But who, who this had seen with tongue and venom steeped, against fortune state would treason have pronounced? Oh, but if the gods had seen her then, when she saw Pyrrhus make malicious sport and mincing with his sword her husband's limbs, oh, the instant burst of clamor that she made, unless things mortal moved them not at all, would have made milch the burning eyes of heaven and passion in the gods. Look whether he has not changed his color and has tears in his eyes. Oh, I pray you no more. <laughs> Tis well. I hear the rest of these tomorrow. Uh, good my lord, will you see these players well bestowed? Do you hear? Let them be well used, mm -hmm. for they are the abstracts and brief chronicles of the time. After your death, you had better have a bad epitaph, the nail ear report while you live. I will use them according to their dessert. Odds, oh, bodikin man, better. Use every man after his dessert, and who should scape whipping? <laughs> use them after your own honor and dignity. The less they deserve, the more merit is in your bounty. Ah, Take them in. Uh, come, sirs. Follow our friends, we're here to play tomorrow. Dost thou hear me, old friend? Can you play the murder of Gonzago? Aye, my lord. We'll have tomorrow night. And you could, for a need, study a speech of some dozen or sixteen lines, which I would set down and insert in, could you not? Aye, my lord. Very well. Now follow that lord, and look you mock or not. Good friends, you are welcome to Elsinore. I will leave you till night. Good, my lord. <laughs> so... God be with thee. <laughs> now I am alone. Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, can force his soul so to his own conceit that from her working all his visage waned, tears in his eyes, distraction in his aspect, and his whole function suiting with forth to his belief, and all for nothing, for Hecuba. What's Hecuba to him or he to Hecuba that he should weep for her? What would he do had he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? He would drown the stage in tears, cleave, the general ear with horrid speech. McMad the guilty, appall the free, confound the ignorant, and amaze indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears. Yet I, a dull and muddy metal rascal, peak like John of Dreams, unpregnant of my cause, and can say nothing. No, not for a king upon whose property and most dear life a damn defeat was made. Ugh, vengeance! Why, what an ass am I? This is most brave that I, the son of a dear father murdered, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must like a whore unpack my heart with words and fall a cursing like a very drab, a scullion, violent, a foe. About my brain. I have heard the guilty creatures sitting at a play have by the very cunning of the scene been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. For murder, though I have no tongue, will speak the most miraculous volume. I'll play something like the murder of my father before mine uncle. I'll observe his looks, I'll tint him to the quick, and he but blinch I know my course. It may be the devil that I have seen. And the devil hath the power to assume a pleasing shape, and perhaps out of my weakness and melancholy, as he is very potent with such spirits, abuses me to damn me. I'll have ground more relative than this. The place, the thing, wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. <laughs> 